a run to safety and risk off and probably no surprise after what happened over the weekend. Yeah, no surprise, but the uh, question is how long will it last? Yeah. Uh, our, our view is I think since last week, I think there was some a bit of uh, sort of easing in the dollar. Um, and uh, especially with the Japanese uh, BOJ's intervention last week as well, which actually led the yen to actually sort of strengthen to one previous seven. I think it unraveled a bit. My sense is I think the dollar sort of softness will start coming back again uh, after the after today's sort of uh, resolve. We were actually looking at about some risk on sort of element for the next one and a half months or so. Um, this week is generally quite quiet in some ways um, compared to previous weeks because there's no FMC or major data. But um, so if dollar is going to soften, how much how much is that is uh, uh, is on expectations? Uh, uh, for the Fed starting a fresh rate cut cycle in September. The odds are, I think we're up at about 94, 95 yes. percent now. Yes, you know, I, I think that's so, sort of priced in in some ways. Yeah. They're expecting the dollar to ease uh, given that uh, the CPI numbers that came out uh, last week. And I think we're going to look at the labor numbers for the U.S. I think will be key as well going forward. But I think for this week, it's probably some of the, in terms of dollar index, in terms of the ECB uh, and how the euro pans out, it looks like the euro probably would strengthen a bit um, uh, this week if uh, no surprises comes out uh, out of the ECB. But um, yeah, our general view is I think dollar easing uh, will continue given ahead of the FOMC in September. Yeah. But when you uh, throw in implied volatility and uh, positioning, are the dollar bulls arguably uh, still in the driver's seat here? Or how radically did last week's very benign CPI number and the pricing now related to September and beyond change that? I, I think, yeah. The, so, the, so what we need is probably you know, across the board globally will be a much, much uh, weaker U.S. sort of uh, growth numbers out of the U.S. And of course, some positive hawkish numbers out of Japan or Bank of Japan globally. But uh, my view is I think first move in September is sort of expected. Uh, by the markets already. The question is whether there'll be further moves and further sort of signals or directions from the Fed uh, beyond September. Or at the most, if they delay September move and into a later move, um, whether they'll move for 50 basis points, uh, move in, in the later part, whether it's too late. So, so it, it depends on the trajectory. And the trajectory actually depends on the extent of the moves by the Fed. It also depends on what happens two months after September and November, right, the elections and after the events of this uh, past weekend. Mm -hmm. One, he's going to get formally nominated yeah. uh, by uh, his own party as a Republican uh, candidate. And two, the odds now have skyrocketed, yeah. right, that he will regain the presidency in November. If, if that is what happens. People are talking about a steeper yield curve, yeah. right, uh, led by the long end. People are talking about a strong dollar as well. Yeah. Do you think that is what is going to happen? Because I look back at Trump won yeah. uh, his uh, first term, and if I remember correctly, dollar was actually weaker, and he had the he uh, uh, the perception was that he was a uh, a manufacturing uh, president. What about this time around, though? If it I, does happen, I, I think we, we need to get it in terms of the duration. Right after, right before the U.S. election, and right after the Trump uh, U.S. elections, actually the dollar sort of strengthened uh, slightly. So we probably might see that. Um, ahead of the November elections, uh, especially with what's happening now and into the November elections. Uh, and the question is whether it, if it remains status quo, and like you mentioned, the scenario is exactly what it would be. It's probably the dollar would strengthen ahead of that and then ease off slightly. Uh, thereafter, I think in terms of manufacturing, I think the U.S. pushed towards manufacturing, I think will continue to be there. I think the global reshore, inshoring back to uh, the U.S. and not just in the U.S. but everywhere globally as well. So yes, indeed, there could be a limitation or to some extent uh, politically to um, ensure that the dollar doesn't strengthen too much. So uh, if, if it does move to massive insuring in the U.S. in the medium term. But I think in the short term, I think uh, U.S. strength uh, will continue to be um, a, a policy that they might continue to have.